lot of times you want to walk out of a project or a meeting and you kind of, you know, you want to be like the Michael Jordan shrug, right? Like, Michael he can't believe it. just swish to three in the NBA finals to cinch the game and like, It's a buzzword in the creative hustle industry right now, but the imposter syndrome is real. So when I started my freelance career, um, and really any interview I ever did, I, you know, I, I embellished a little bit. I came off a little more polished than I actually was. And in freelance, I definitely had to do that to score some jobs. I mean, it's just like any other gig style career somebody's got to be your first client somebody's got to take that leap for me um that started in a very humble place but eventually it ramped like fast and quick and i would come out of these proposal meetings or these discovery calls and i'd be like oh my gosh like they're talking you know a lot of money and big numbers and i would immediately start going am i like actually worth that like Am I good enough to do this? Am I a fraud? And all these thoughts start creeping in and that's that's imposter syndrome. That's where you start, you know, kind of questioning your abilities or you question, um, you know, if you're good enough for the task at hand. I'd like to say that I have beaten this problem, right? I've watched a lot of videos of other creatives or just other generally successful people and listen to podcasts about successful people and they all say the same thing, it doesn't really go away. It's more about managing it. What I try to do now is instead of just being like, oh, I'm gonna beat this problem, I go, hey, like, you know, where's my headspace right now? Uh, where are my insecurities lying? I start really dissecting the source of the insecurity. The other thing that will really help with imposter syndrome is not being a fraudulent person. If a client a potential client is like, hey, I'll give you X number of dollars for this project and it's three, four times more than you would have proposed or estimated, then tell them that. You don't go to a car dealership and be like, hey, I have $40,000, what can you get me? And the car, the car dealer goes, hey, well, this Honda Accord is $40,000. It's perfect, it's right under budget. It's like, that's never gonna work. I mean, there's some shady car dealers out there, but I don't know anybody that has kept a car dealership doing that. That will help a lot with this idea of like, hey, am I kind of blowing smoke or, you know, whatever. Ask yourself the question, are you being legitimate? Are you respecting your rate? Don't have a very highly fluctuating rate. Even when I do fixed price contracts, I estimate estimate the hours and then I subsidize a little extra just in case we go out of scope. And if we're way under budget, I change the fixed rate uh, price at the end. Do my clients require that of me? Not ever that I know of, but I always do it because my base rate is what I need to be making, okay? So if I'm going way above that, then maybe I need to reevaluate my rate, which I've done. I've changed my base rate, but it doesn't fluctuate. Like if I think a rich client there are big clients coming after me. I don't go, well, my rate's suddenly four times what it was. That's how you keep business, you know? That's how you keep clients and that's how you keep a job. If you feel that that feeling that we all kind of get, figure out if it's depression or if you're in a, you know, a, a mental battle or if it truly is, you know, the problem that you're you're not being a sincere person. Um, I've never heard anybody talk about imposter syndrome that way, but I think it's important uh, it, and to remind yourself and to double check. The other thing too is I'm not saying you can't fake it till you make it, right? Don't lie. Don't ever lie, ever, about work, life, whatever. But you do kind of need to, you need to give off the air of confidence. That's way different, right? You're not being a liar or a fraudulent person if you're selling something and utilizing marketing and salesmanship techniques. So I do employ those. You just gotta be careful. But uh, the self-doubt doesn't really go away. I've been doing this for a while now and it doesn't go away. And so you have to manage it. You have to understand uh, the root and you need to constantly be in a state of growth and improvement. Um, you're not going to fix anything overnight. You need to make you know, mental health decisions. I'm gonna get more into that as this channel continues to develop. Um, 
in what I'm gonna call design parables, but I'm not gonna get into one of those right now, but like I've started utilizing different tactics in my workflow that are for my mental health and to fight insecurity or fight productivity issues. And like I'm using a notebook for something, um, you know, to track tasks now um, and it's, it's helping. So constantly be in a state of growth. And if you're doing that as a, a career person, you don't have to be a designer, uh, to desire growth. If you're doing that, you're doing awesome. Why are you even watching this video? So let me know if that makes sense. Let me know if these videos are helpful. Um, I want to know where you're at in the freelance journey. Um, or I say freelance journey a lot, but like design career. Uh, I'm starting to try to do more coaching for um, designers that have just gotten out of college or freelancers that are starting to freelance. Like um, I'm developing a um, educational course around some of those things. So let me know in the comments where you're at and I'd love to kind of touch base with you in the comments um, and see if there's anything I can make future videos about. One day I would love to walk off the court with a little shrug and maybe I will, but uh, as of right now, I'm gonna have to keep working on this and you probably are too.